What's going on everybody? I'm your host Baby Spine and today I'm going to be showing you guys my Chimera deck build and guide. So for the guide portion of this video and deck build, well yeah, what the video is. We're just going to be talking about his stats and abilities and kind of let you know what Chimera is and maybe how you should be using his abilities. Given the situation, after we go through this, I will go ahead and show you a video guide portion of the video. So if you're only here for the deck build, you can just watch this part and his abilities and whatnot. And then if you're if and then if you want to stick around after that, we'll have a video guide where I also commentate through it and kind of just tell you how I'm using them. So for starters, Chimera is a fighter slash jungler or duelist hero and he has a basic attack of six an ability power of four a durability of seven and a mobility of four and i just want to go ahead and point out that he has a pretty high durability clocking in at seven if we look at other fighters feng mao has five grux has five you know if you wanted to consider kalari a fighter not really but durability one like that's the highest durability out of all the fighters. Not only that, but that's clocking in at one under Rampage who has an eight. So that's borderline like you can play Chimera as like a bruiser tank if you so want to because of just how he's how he is actually built and how he scales in general with armor and whatnot. So that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at his abilities real quick and just kind of give you a rundown of what he has. He has his basic attack, hack, which will deal 40 physical damage and scale upward with your as you as you upgrade more physical damage. Next, we will have uh, ambush, which will. This is his gap closer slash escape move. Sorry, I was reading the PM down there. No, I'm not going to play it right now. I'm actually doing a video. But uh, Chimera leaps to a target enemy hero, briefly stunning that hero and dealing 40 physical damage and an AOE. So this is his. Not really escape move, if I just said that, sorry. It's his gap closer. He does not have a disengage. This guy has no escape move to ever get out of a confrontation. He's like Richter and Sparrow in that department. But he can leap onto his target. Although I will add that Ambush is a very small gap closer and is not comparable to other people's abilities that allow them to gap close onto people like Grux or Feng Mao. With Charge and Reaping Dash, they can get a lot more ground than Chimera can with Ambush and I feel like this ability is just lacking a little bit and it wouldn't hurt if they buffed it up a notch to allow it to go a little bit further or something to kind of just make up for his lack of disengage. Alright so next we're going to talk about his other ability Unleash upon activation. Hack attack speed is maxed out for the next five attacks within five seconds. Physical damage card scaling is reduced to 20% during these attacks increasing each time the ability is leveled up. So he basically just lets out a flurry of hacks, and that's really good. This helps him build up his health regen passive, which we'll go over in a minute. And this is just really nice. It's nice to activate this for some good burst damage and uh, health regen scaling with spirit regeneration. This is his passive. Chimera's health regen is boosted for five seconds each time he lands a hack attack on an enemy. This effect stacks and increases ineffectiveness each time the ability is leveled up. So I really like to prioritize spirit regeneration when playing with Chimera and getting this leveled up almost more than his ultimate because this is a game winner right here. This will get this lets you bully people so hard early to mid game and even gives them some serious 1vx potential if you have a little bit of resistances and health uh, here in the early game. So that's really good and what I like to do with spirit regeneration is, is because it stacks the health regen with each hit I like to actually pop a health potion right before I get into a fight that way this will boost the health regeneration up really high up past 15 and then with the next hit it starts stacking from 15 and going up and up and up so the health potion will always act as a boost for spirit regeneration to really help you climb that health regen up real fast. Alright so next is call which is his ultimate. After a brief channel, Chimera roots and causes 200 physical damage to a targeted enemy hero. Nearby enemies are displaced and receive a 60% max movement speed slow for 3 seconds. Now I've been reading reddit posts, oh sorry my freaking mic just hit my other mic, sorry. But I've been reading reddit posts and you know epic games forums and I have seen a lot of stuff right now about Chimera being broken or needing some love and I honestly 
kind of agree with that stuff because right now the intended way if you were to watch this developer tutorial here they explained to you that basically the ideal way chimera should be played is as this you know physical damage crit chance you know kind of like kind of how i'd build my fing mal you know or grux with the lawnmower build they kind of say that's the way to that's pretty much the ideal way to play chimera focusing on physical damage and crit chance and that's kind of a problem if that's all you focus on with Chimera. While he does have some good burst damage, everybody focuses him. If you're playing a team that's using wards, good game. They're going to focus Chimera and kill him before he can ever do anything. <laughs> so, honestly, um, I say there's different ways to play him. The glass cannon build works well, but you better have a Decker running around you and a Steel who are constantly CCing for you so nobody touches you because it's really hard to get away with Chimera and if people focus him, he's gonna be screwed. And the problem with Cole that I've been reading on all these posts and you know forums and whatnot is that this ability, I've even experienced it myself, the animation that he does to start this takes forever and often people will walk away before you can even do it. Or when you do catch him with it, whenever he's doing the ending animation frames, they had they literally can start moving and kiting you while you're still in your animation. Like that slow for three seconds doesn't mean anything because you're technically stunned while they get to walk away. <laughs> you're stunned within your own frame rates and it's terrible. So they really need to fix this to where the enemy stays rooted and they can't walk away from you and disengage while you're doing it. It's absolutely terrible right now and it really hurts them if you go with a glass cannon build because like ranger carries just kite you. They walk backwards and they blow you up which leads me to another problem that is kind of wrong with the game right now. We need to honestly hopefully epic games can implement this but we need to get some movement speed penalties for walking backwards right now if you're a carry and you're walking backwards or anybody you don't have a movement speed penalty and that's normally where in other mobas where the melee could catch up to you but in this game it's not a thing because you're not getting a penalty when you're walking backwards aka backpedaling you should be penalized you should have to stop or you should be moving slower like in smite or another game and that's honestly one reason that I've also read in a post that's exactly, I agree with this 100%, why Melee feels bad right now. <laughs> it feels bad, and carries feel super powerful because they don't really get penalized for anything they do as far as movement goes. All right, so now with my little rant out of the way about why Chimera is slightly lacking and broken, but still is a good hero, this is honestly why I've led to building Chimera a different way, so let's go on and check that out. Sorry about my long rant there. Alright, so let's check out the deck build I went with, called The Beast from the Wood. No, just kidding. That's like the little kid in the trailer. As you can see, it's got 35% offense and 55% defense and a little bit of 8% utility. That's going to be your health, mana, harvester key, scout's ward, and uh, probably the guardian's ward as well. But either way, you know, as you can see, it's a well-rounded bruiser deck build for Chimera. Because, as I mentioned earlier, that high 7 durability really allows, and his growth affinity, he has growth and fury affinity, you know, really allow him to be played more as a bruiser tanky class if you want to play him that way. And I feel it's a lot better right now because everybody's focusing Chimera and a lot of his abilities are lacking right now and I feel it leads to him getting screwed over in a lot of fights if he's if he's real glass cannon, you know. So, let me show you this build, it, especially if you're a new player, I feel this is going to help you out with Chimera a lot. Alright, so for starters, we're going to be using the Centurion. This is going to give you 1,000 health. Uh, it's your OP Prime buff card. When you, get, when you pick up the Orb Prime or you turn it in and your whole, and your whole team gets it, you will get this card, the 1,000 health, 100% damage bonus, and your minions get 500 additional max health. Uh, after that, we'll go ahead and equip a Harvester Key, Health Potion, Mana Potion, Scout Sword, Harvester Key to plant Harvesters, Health Potion to help out with your Health Regen Passive and stack that up extra high mana potion to help get your mana up throughout the game and a scout's ward early in the beginning just to put down you know an additional ward and then you can later switch it out for your key and help put harvesters down all right so the first card we're going to be getting is the guardian's ward and this is going to be I, honestly i would have done this in my older decks but I, i'm saying this now every single deck build i do from now on is always going to have some type of shadow ward card in it whether it's a guardian's ward brawler's ward you know, Magus Ward, anything, every build I have is going to have a ward in it. And 
this is because these things are crucial to every competitive game. If you want to win, you need to have wards down. You need to know when ganks are coming to get you. And you need to know, you know, just in general, map vision. It's like one of the biggest things in MOBAs. All right, so with this Guardian's Ward, it's going to give you 7.6 physical damage, 100 health, and fully upgraded 7.6 physical damage, as well as allow you to place two different Shadow Wards, uh, in, uh, which last for three minutes. And these are really good because it's not unlike the Scout's Ward, which is visible to people. The Shadow Ward is not visible, and other people are going to have to stand in a Shadow Pad or put their own Shadow Ward down to destroy yours, which means they have to run wards. And if they don't, well, you're always going to have map vision over them. And we're going to be, this is technically going to be our health card here. We will be giving it three healths, three two-point healths. This is going to get your health up because Chimera... May have a 7 durability, but because he doesn't have a way to disengage, often gets focused, and he needs to have some health. He really does, or else he's going to go down quick and not do anything for anybody. Alright, so, Spiked Bone Plate. This is what we're going to get here. And, guys, let me just emphasize this. This build is specifically focusing on most team comps in general that have a physical and energy carry. Or just in general have a, you know, mixed and matched physical and energy you know type comp if you're playing an all physical team you can switch around some of these cards to make it to where you're only resisting physical or you're only resisting energy but this build like i said is going to be going against most logical comps that have a good mix of physical and energy we're going to use the spiked bone plate this is going to give you 22 physical armor 7.6 physical damage and 15.2 more physical physical damage when it's fully upgraded we'll be upgrading this with three two-point strike cards to get your physical damage up there for starters next we'll get the thorned green weave and we will be also this is like the opposite of the spiked bone plate except instead of the um the armor the physical armor you get energy armor now so what i like to do in the beginning is just equip you know my guardian's ward and then i will or my first nine points i get my ward Thorned Green Weave and Spiked Bone Plate to uh, immediately get, you know, a little bit of additional health, physical damage, and energy and physical armor, which is going to make you really tanky in the early game, especially if that's what you're using your first nine points on. After that, either way, you can start filling these up with strikes and your Guardian's Ward with health or whatever you feel you're going to be needing. The, like I said, three two-point strikes on this one as well. These are really good growth cards for starters because they are some of the max damage cards you can be using here in the beginning of the game that give you that 15.2 and 7.6, some of the higher-end damage cards. All right, so after that, we're going to be getting a Swift Creek Heart. This is a four-point uh, growth card here that's going to be giving you 100 health, 6.5 attack speed, and a fully upgraded bonus of 300 health. And I'm doing this because this is just following suit with my Bruiser build, which is to be able to dish out damage, but to be able to take it at the same time. Because, like we said, Chimera doesn't have a way to disengage fights. We're going to give this two two-point kinetics and a minor kinetic, so it'll equal out at nine points, like the other three cards I've mentioned previously. That'll be four nine-point cards, by the way. And then we'll get on to your 12-point cards, which I will recommend something else you can do if you if you would like to change up your play style and you don't want to be super, super resistant and tanky. But either way, I'm going to show you what I did in this build. So next, depending on who, you know, who is doing more damage at this point, if you see their Twin Blast and Sparrows are killing you, or maybe their Murdochs and Grims are devastating, you know, it's your choice. But if it's the physical you're worried about, next you're going to equip the Tempered Plate which is going to give you 22 physical armor, 100 health, and then a fully upgraded bonus of 44 physical armor. Then we will be giving this two three-point greater guards, which give you 66 physical armor a pop, and a greater health, which gives you an additional 300 health. This is going to put your physical armor really high and your health. And then we can get the Tomb Barrier on so we can resist those Murdochs and Grims and hopefully not let them kill you in one ultimate that pretty much shoots you from far away or automatically homes onto you. You don't want to die when that hits you, so you're going to need your energy resistance and more health. That's why we're using the Toon Barrier. It's like the equivalent for energy, equivalent opposite for the Tempered Plate, but it's for energy armor instead. It does the same stuff, and we'll be giving this two greater barriers, which are three, three points and give you 66 energy armor a pop and a greater health, which we already said will give you an additional 300 health. And that's the build. Like I said, if you wanted to switch it up and let's say you only had an all physical team, well, drop the thorn green, green weave, put another spiked bone plate on there so you're only resisting physical, you know, and don't use a tuned barrier. Use a tempered plate with another tempered plate so you can really resist 
physical people a lot more. Or if it was all energy, vice versa, drop the spiked bone plate, get another thorn green weave, drop the tempered plate, get another tuned barrier, and uh, just only resist energy. If that was, the, you know, it's situational, you can equip those cards into there. Like I said, this is more of a universal kind of help everybody build for how the majority of people play the game right now. And that's with most comps that do have high damage, you know, physical carries and energy carries. So this build is going to help you for those kind of teams, which in my um, experiences are like 99% of games. And there's a small percent, I guess 90%, there's a small percent of where you do get like all physical teams and it's like, wow, really? Okay, let me just easily resist everybody. Uh, another thing you could do is if you didn't want to be super tanky at the end game and you're like, you know what, I don't want to be so tanky, I'd rather try something else out, you could always, you know, do lifesteal or something instead. And that'll, that's another way to really sustain this guy if you wanted to throw on a few Brand of the Iron Eaters with greater drains here. This would, uh, instead of using the Tempered Plate and Tomb Barrier, look for another way to mitigate damage, and that's also by getting it back with everything you hit with lifesteal. You could get this, and this would give you a lot of lifesteal, so with the greater drains... Brand of the Iron Eater there, and uh, Greater Drains together for 12-point cards. Equip, you know, let's say you wanted to run that, and then, or situationally, like, you know, I might want to do this at the end of the game, because you'd be surprised with the Spiked Bone Plate, Thorn Greave Weave, Thorned Green Weave, and Swift Creek Cart, you actually swing pretty fast and it hurts a little bit, and it'd be nice to actually sap all that life back into you if you wanted to play that way. So you could always run a Siphon Slash style life build, uh, build and if you're not sure how that would look go check out my PC elitist vs console peasants video where my Fing Mao is running all wind carvers with two brand of the iron eaters and greater drains it's not necessarily a build video but you can see the in-game life still benefits there if you go watch it towards the end of the game a twin blast was boxing me down to nothing and I started hitting all the minions and my health just skyrocketed back to full health so uh, it's really nice to run these but you got to remember that uh you know, carries can blow you up on your way when you engage them. You know, people say melee is all about positioning. And honestly, if you're playing a high level team and they all have wards, there is no positioning advantage in this game. And like I said, carries don't have, uh, nobody really has movement speed penalties for backpedaling. So it basically makes kiting a professional thing on here. You can just kite everything. It makes carries really powerful because they don't get, they don't, like I said, they don't have to slow down when they walk backwards. So if they're using wards like this Guardian's Ward or Mage's Ward or whatever, and they are always putting them down on their flanks, they're always going to see you coming. You're never going to get close enough to gap close onto them, and they can blow you the hell up easily by kiting, walking backwards, and blowing you up with AAs. It's not cool. Woo. So that's why I say it's nice to be kind of a bruiser build with this guy. Really, it's really nice because you can take that initial damage when they're sitting there kiting you, and sometimes you know you can get close enough to gap close, pop a health potion, and just get to you know build that health regen up and kind of become a threat. That's why that's what I really like about this build, and you know this build throws people off a lot because everybody likes to focus Chimera. A lot of people run glass cannon Chimera builds, and this allows you know people to basically not be able to blow him up everybody wants to focus him but when they go to focus this type of build they're going to quickly realize that their damage isn't is what what they thought it was chimera is going to be resisting a lot of their damage and he's going to be building his health regen up really fast so he's not going to be your ideal target to burn down and if they try to and you have a competent team you guys can easily white people in team fights and even use chimera to engage as kind of a bruiser tank on the team and off tank he's really good uh, he can keep up with Rampages and stuff like that very easily and just out-sustain them because, you know, Rampage has his ultimate, which gives him health regen, but this guy doesn't have to do, Chimera doesn't have to do an ultimate to get his health regen. He just has to stay in the fight, and if he's tanky enough to stay in the fight, he can get health regen to build over 100. I think I've had it up to 130 in a bot game, 130 health regen, no ultimate, no nothing. And he can just really keep up with everybody. Oh, there's my brother over at Paragon Pro Gaming sending me an invite, Tree Sniper. I guess I'll go ahead and get off and play with him and close this out. It's almost been a 20-minute commentary. I'm sorry for talking your ear off. And, you know, I will be happy to show you the guide portion of this video now.
video guide that is and you know if you got the build you came here for what you wanted you know and you, you're happy you can stop watching at this point and like i said if you want to stay through and watch the rest of the video i will talk you through a game with chimera and give you some in the field commentary and experiences as they're happening anyways guys i'll catch you guys later and i will see you in the game all right so when you get to 60 card points this build will give you an additional 151.5 physical damage 39 attack speed 1900 health and 220 physical and energy resistance what's going on everybody i'm your host baby spine and today we're going to be starting off with a health mana and harvester key like usual for most of my jungler kind of fighter heroes but either way we're going to go ahead and head on over to the left lane and go ahead and just help out howitzer here and just push these minions up and try to level up a little bit and get some additional CXP by trying to last hit the minions to get an additional, you know, 100 CXP instead of like 10 or whatever they would just drop by themselves. It's like 10 or 20 if you don't get the last hit, so it's definitely not worth it. And we're just going to hang out here in the lane and kind of lane in the beginning because, you know, obviously harvesters don't spawn until 3 minutes and jungle minions pretty much don't spawn until around that same time, but... We're actually trying out a, a laning strategy this game. We're going to do a 2-1-2 two, two and just keep everybody in lanes, except for when harvesters need to go down. I will dip off and go do that as I am still kind of like going to get harvesters down for everybody. We're going to go ahead and pick up our Guardian's Ward, and that's going to allow us to play Shadow Wards for our team because that's what everybody's doing. We're going to get the right lane harvester down with that harvester reset. Now we got both our jungle side harvesters and I'm making my way back over to the lane. As you see there, I'm placing wards so we can be aware to when enemies are coming over to our lane. And I'm gonna go ahead and try and flank Murdoch right now because he's overextended past the halfway point. I'm gonna go ahead and jump on him, wait for him to do a shield shot so I can do an ambush and jump right back onto him. And now he doesn't have anything and he has to take this beat down. Me and Howitzer are gonna run him down and get the kill. Howitzer's gonna blow him away with what appeared to be his R2000 whatever 200,000 missile. <laughs> that thing's awesome. Real kill stealer that is. Anyway, we're just going to kind of push the lane up and I'm going to go ahead and head back real quick and uh, reset my harvester key. As you can see, I've been leveling up the spirit regeneration and then the unleash and then ambush after that, but I like to prioritize spirit regeneration. Obviously, upgrade your ultimate when it becomes available at level 5, but I'm just going to focus on spirit regeneration being the most important one because as the health regen stacks with every basic attack hit it really allows you to get really crazy if you can build that health regen up like up to 20 30 plus here in the early game it's not fun for anybody who tries to fight chimera at that point and you can pretty much fight their whole team at the same time because nobody has that much damage in the beginning of the game i'm ran over there to get the left lane harvester down and iggy and murdoch both come over here to harass me but they don't really have enough damage to do anything to me at this point in the game. Plus how he covered me with the mine. They didn't want no, no part of that. So they went ahead and backed off. Alright, so we're just going to chill here and kind of play defense and push our lane up. And let our other lanes do what they need to do in the process. And it looks like we are still going to be needing the OP buff harvester and right lane harvester. But Gideon's coming over here to help me for a gank. So I go ahead and jump on him. Murdoch, catch him in travel mode. Gideon does an ultimate, and I CC him all the way through it. He never makes it out alive. That was great. Good gank from Tree Sniper over at Paragon Pro Gaming. Go check his channel out. That's my brother. And now I'm going to go ahead and return home, and like I just mentioned, go ahead and try and get these harvesters down. I'm going to scope out their team, and it looks like they have a lot of energy damage. So I'm going to go with the Thorned Greenweave. And that's going to give me the 22 physical armor and the uh, physical damage as well. And that's what I'm going to need here because most of their team is running high energy damage. And they're looking to kill you that way. So that's why I decided to get Thorn Greenway first. So if I run into Iggy or Murdoch, I will be able to resist them and possibly beat them too. Hopefully. Because they are probably going to be squishy. Most people are running glass cannon builds with their carries and casters nowadays. And... That's what I like about that, these uh, starting out with Thorn Green Weave and Spiked Bone Plate, allowing you to early game resist people is super beneficial. Now here comes Iggy, and he's just going to, he's coming over here, and he's going to do everything he can to stop me from destroying this Harvester. He catches me in travel mode, and he drops a turret and does his ultimate, and I am just taking it all on the chin. But if you notice at my health regen, I'm currently up to 24, 25, holy crap, 
30 plus health regen right now. I am out sustaining Iggy and will surely beat him in this 1v1. Although the problem is, is he's been here too long and my team's already on the way to destroy him. Now that's the good thing because had I been a squishy chimera, I don't think I would have survived for very long if I had gotten travel mode rooted and all that ultimate on the chin turrets like if I didn't get spite you know the thorn green weave and the guardians ward and all this stuff for health and resistances I don't know if I could have survived that Iggy's building cast and v27 hurt pretty bad anyway we're running up on Murdoch right now and we go ahead and burst on him I seen him use his shield shot so I jumped on him with ambush followed it up with an unleash and now I'm gonna corner it up for a call and boom that's the killing blow Murdoch is down all right, got my whole team rallying together, and we are pushing up on the middle lane. And Johnny Boy, the, our Murdoch, snipe, counter snipes their Murdoch. Oh, I'm going to jump on Iggy, kind of stick him in Howitzer's alt for a second, and tower dive onto him with an unleash, and finish him off for another killing blow, because I never got to finish him off that first time we met. Anyways, my team's pushing up on the middle tower. We're going to go poke it and stuff, and I'm going to go ahead and return home, and upgrade a little bit more with what points I have I'll put a health on the Guardian's Ward to go ahead and get some additional health now to go ahead and just stack with my 22 physical and energy armor now I'm really tanky uh, to any type of uh, damage their team has whether it be physical or energy and I got health to back it up and I really like that because most people don't in my experiences don't really expect this with Chimera they don't expect him to be resistant to their attacks I think everybody at the, at the moment expects Chimera to be this really squishy you know glass cannon and uh, I'm starting to run them different ways so me and Gideon are pushing into the left tower while nobody's here we're gonna go ahead and punish it and go ahead and poke it down try to bring it down and it appears that while I'm hitting the tower I seen something on my ward over there flashing in the jungle and it appears that we have an enemy in their jungle and my howitzer is gonna is about to engage him so I figure I'll go ahead and help him out it's a chimera and I figure I will go ahead and just ambush right on top of him interrupted his ambush we were both hitting unleashes on each other that looked pretty freaking epic it was like a Dragon Ball Z fight for a second anyways I hit a call with him and he got to disengage that's what I was talking about earlier but that's not gonna let him disengage from Howie's pokes so Howie finished him off anyway but still you know like you, you see what I meant about the call right there I did the call and he completely got to walk away while I was doing it he got hit by it but it didn't stop like by the time I was done he was like five feet away so that, that, in my opinion, that's a problem. They shouldn't be allowed to get five feet away if you hit them with coal. All right, so anyway, we're going to jump onto Murdoch, and he's not going to be able to do anything. I got him to shield shot me towards his tower, which allowed me to continue to cut him off and body block him, and he could not keep up with that 30-plus health regeneration. He tried to damage me. He just could not, and that allowed me and Howie to take him out, and that's what I meant earlier when I was talking about building the deck is that... <clears throat> You know, people are gonna go, are gonna target Chimera, and they're gonna naturally think, "Hey, this is the guy to burn down. He's really squishy. Let me go ahead and kill Chimera." And that's not the case with this build. People will, like I said, they'll go to target you, and they'll quickly find out that you were not the person that they should have tried to burn down first. <laughs> so there you go. They knew that that was gonna be the game was gonna be over shortly after that. They were not trying to see some low-level Chimeras and what howies and whatnot walk into their base <laughs> 20 minutes into the game they went ahead and surrendered and hey it would have been over in the next five minutes anyway if not sooner anyways guys i hope you enjoyed this and i'll catch you later this is baby spine out peace 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 peace